Coming up in this segment of Slash Etsy, I'm going to show you how useful SSH tunnels can be and why you might want to use an SSH tunnel over, say, a VPN or vice versa. But before we get to that, it's very germane. I want to thank this segment's sponsor, Untangle. That's right, Untangle is sponsoring this segment on the Linux Action Show, so now we can bring you even more goodies. And thank you to Untangle. Did you know Untangle firewalls work flawlessly once you have them installed so you can set it and forget it? I love the idea. Picture it. A network full of Windows boxes, protected by a Linux box on the border. That's right, my friends. Go check out Untangle. Thing is, is Untangle knows that choosing an edge of the network device, that's a big decision and a big commitment. It takes your time, takes your money, takes your resources. You can try Untangle software for free. Just go over to their website, untangle.com. No credit card needed. No commitment to buy. Just download the ISO, load it on your own hardware, and try it out. And by the way, when you're over there, once you've loaded on your own hardware, you decide to like it, use the code LAST20. Take 20% off their services. That's a great deal. Go over to untangle.com and thank you to Untangle for sponsoring this segment of Slash Etsy. All right. This is very uh, this is very perfect because one of the things you can do with Untangle devices is set up a VPN. And I'll tell you, I think VPNs are great for bridging two networks, A and B, and you have a you have a requirement where you need a persistent connection that is secure over the internet between these two remote locations. Maybe you want to run multiple applications, multiple protocols over this connection. That's where a VPN is great, and oftentimes you do it between two hardware edge devices, like an Untangle device, and boom, Bob's your uncle, you never even have to worry about it. So where do SSH tunnels fit in with this? Well, I can tell you one thing. A lot of people like me, I already have SSH open on my home network because I love and trust SSH. I don't have a VPN appliance set up yet, although I could. But the other thing is SSH tunnels are also a little bit more application specific. Maybe you only need one particular app. You don't need all of the network. This is where SSH tunnels can be a little superior. They're a little more faster, a little quicker, a little more dynamic. And since we already love SSH, we already know SSH, it's really easy to slip right into. Let me give you a perfect example. Two scenarios that have come across my plate all the time. Number one, clients got a bunch of applications on their network that they need me to manage, and when something's fixed, broken and they need it fixed right away, an SSH tunnel is perfect. Let's say they have a Postgres database. Well, they're not going to want to expose that Postgres database to the internet. That way their consulting can connect to it from wherever he's at. Of course not. But they will open up an SSH login to their network, and I can log into that SSH server and then use a tunnel to then jump from that machine over to the Postgres server or whatever it is I might want to manage. Let me give you another example, one I use quite often, just recently. It's kind of an oxymoron. Own Cloud. Now, we've talked about Own Cloud before, just did a review. I just did my updates on my OpenSUSE box, and it's improved my performance. But I'm still not quite ready to open up my Own Cloud installation to the web directly, right? I don't want to put that out there. So an SSH tunnel comes to the rescue. I already have SSH up. But let's uh, go through the scenario. Let's say I'm at a client's, or maybe I'm at work, or uh, I'm at school, whatever. Well, here's my own cloud box. Look at that. Web page is not available. Oh, Chrome, how you've forsaken me. No, what can it do, right? I, I haven't put my own cloud server on the web. The only way it's accessible is via SSH. Nothing I can do about that, right? <laughs> no. Why do you even think I'm doing this segment if you think that? Gosh, what's your problem? All right, here we go. So here's my own cloud box. This is it up and running on my OpenSUSE machine at home. And I can see it's up. I know it's there, but I just can't get to it from my remote location. Well, friends, I can solve that for you. Let's take a look here at SSH tunnels. So first, fire up your terminal, and then I'll give you the GUI after we get through. the. We're going to eat our veggies, and then I'll give you the dessert. So the GUI is the dessert, but first, you got to man up and eat your veggies. And that includes you too, ladies. Fire up the terminal like I have here, and then uh, get all that crap off there. Jeez, quit looking at my processes, you guys. A bunch of voyeurs. And uh, here's a little here's a little secret sauce. I'm going to connect to port 80 on my remote host because that is a lower reserved port. I have to do it as root. If you're connecting to something that's up in the upper ranges, that's just a free for all. You don't have to do it as root. But because I'm connecting to 80 and I'm opening port 80. I have to do it as root. So let me show this to you and I'll explain it as I go. So tossing in the uh, sudo there and I do SSH dash capital N N tells it not to execute a command on the remote host. Then I put in my remote host. So I'm going to say uh, I put in the IP here, but you might use something like dynamic DNS maybe to register your home IP and then you would just put that in there. Now here's the magic. I say open port 80. I'm saying open port 80, right? Open port 80 on my local machine. That's why I'm doing this as root and bind it to that remote SSH 
systems port 80. Yeah, it could be any port, right? I could open local port 80 and bind it to port 8800 on the remote system. So it doesn't matter. But in this case, I'm doing 8080 on both sides. I hit enter here. It asked me for my password because I did the sudo. And then it asked me for the remote system's password. Put that in. And now I have the, once you just get no return and it just sits there paused, you're good. Your tunnel is open. So now if I go over here to my uh, Chrome and I hit enter, up oh, there's my own cloud installation from the remote system through that SSH tunnel. Boom, right? And what's great is you can give it commands where this uh, terminal won't just hang here so it'll close when it's done. So it would just stay open in the background persistently as long as you leave SSH the PID, the process running. It'll keep, it'll keep it connected. I prefer... I prefer to leave it running on the terminal that way I can close the, the tunnel just by closing the, uh, the window here. So if you, so for example, if I end the tunnel by doing a control C, so it closes the SSH process, thus closing the tunnel. And now I go over here, the page no longer loads. So you can see I'm routing through that tunnel and that's pretty cool. Now, I promised you I'd also give you a little dessert. That's the command line. That command is so simple and I'll have it in the show notes, but maybe you want to do it in the GUI. I understand not all of us love the command line, although really come on. Come on, it's not that bad, but check it out. Now I'm using the app pick this week, the uh, GNOME SSH, uh, GSTM for short, and I'm gonna run it on the command line to execute it because I need to do it as root. So I will run uh, sudo GSTM, but if you're not doing a, a lower port, you could just run it as a regular user. sudo GSTM, hit enter, put in my sudo password, which I use my fingerprint for, and here it is. This is SSH Tunnel Manager. Very simple GTK application. You can see I already have an entry, but I'll walk you through this. So you would say add. In this case, I'm going to do properties. You put in the name of the connection. I put in own cloud. You put the host you want to connect to. Put the login information. Put the, uh, put the port and put a key in there, which is very nice if you have that. Then you define the port details. So you would say add, and you say it's a local port on 80 on this remote host to this remote port. Super easy, so easy, right? You hit OK, and then uh, hit Start, and it turns green right there. Now, you see here in the command line, I can see it's asking me for a password to the remote system because I didn't use a key, so I'll go ahead and put that in now. Another nice side benefit about kicking it out from this command line is you can sometimes see some of that stuff kind of kick out. So I have a green light on my own cloud tunnel. Now, if I go open up Chrome and I hit Enter, Bob's your uncle. I have established the own cloud tunnel. Uh, and the SSH tunnel to my own cloud server. And if I go in here and I hit stop and I try to load the page, page cannot be displayed. So you see there's a, gru there's a GUI way to do it. But honestly, if it's just a one-off thing, I'd say just do it on the command line. If it's, a, if it's a reoccurring thing you need to do quite often, it might be nice to have the, uh, the key ring, man the, uh, what do they call it? SSH tunnel manager. I, GTSM is what, or yeah, S whatever. G GSTM or SSH tunnel manager. Either way, Great, 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 great functionality of SSH. One of my favorite things that SSH can do. It's not just for logins, it's for a lot more. And I'm sure there's other great GUI management applications for tunnels. In fact, I'd love to hear them. Just email linuxactionshow at jupiterbroadcasting.com with your recommended SSH tunnel manager, and maybe we'll feature them on a future show. I'd also like to hear about what you might want to see covered in the slash Etsy segment. So just let me know at that email address or hit the contact link at the top of the Jupiter Broadcasting website. Back to you guys. Ooh. 